All right, welcome back. It's time for another Good Vibes with Debbie Cox Denova. She's in the studio right now. And the topic today, uh, let me quote her, <laughs> taming the monkey mind. What the heck is that? The monkey mind is a runaway mind. We all have thoughts that happen right. in our head, about 60,000 thoughts every right. single day. Right. About 95% of them or 90% of them is are the same thoughts that you had yesterday and overwhelmingly they're negative thoughts because of negativity bias. Mm -hmm. So for some of us, those thoughts can take over and you can start to cat catastrophize situations. You can start to overthink things and live with a level of stress and anxiety that that you do not have to live with. I want to talk about some strategies mm -hmm. for taming the monkey mind, bringing yourself back to present. So get rid of the toxic mind. Correct, yeah. Okay. And not allowing the mind mm -hmm. to, to run you. The mind is right. a beautiful tool. We've talked mm -hmm. about that before. But as a master, it is absolutely terrible. And so it's all about regaining the control over your mind, mm -hmm. being able to take your thoughts. And it's really the difference between looking at your thoughts versus looking through your thoughts, right? Yeah. Our brain is a thought producing, a word producing machine. Mm -hmm. And so the problem is that for some of us, the RPMs on your thoughts are going so fast that there's no space between the thoughts. And what mm -hmm. automatically happens is that you start identifying with the thoughts that come through. Instead of looking at it, which is uh, a healthier way to be and, and actually assessing, is this true or is mm. this not true? Do I believe it or do I not believe it? You start to automatically think, first of all, that the thoughts are you, mm -hmm. right? And that the thoughts are true, even if they actually aren't. So here's an example, here's a story for you, okay? Mm -hmm. So a man's driving along a country road and in the middle of nowhere, he gets a flat tire. So it's the middle of the night, he gets out, he starts to, to take care of it and realizes, mm -hmm. much to his dismay, that he forgot his jack at home. So he doesn't have a jack and he knows that the nearest farm is about a mile away. So he begins the long trek of walking to the farmhouse in the middle of the night to see if the farmer has a jack for him. Along the way, his thoughts start to take over and he starts thinking, it's the middle of the night. What if he doesn't, if he doesn't hear me knocking on the door mm -hmm. and then I'll have to walk all the way back? What if he doesn't have a jack? Mm -hmm. Over what time, if Bigfoot comes what out if of the Bigfoot woods? Comes, exactly. <laughs> As he's walking a little further, he thinks to himself, well, you know, farmers have guns. Well, what if he comes out and, 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 and he decides to shoot me? What if he decides to rob me? Right. By the time he gets all the way to the farmhouse, he's built himself up into a, such a frenzy that he's mm -hmm. imagining the farmer as this bug-eyed, mean guy. Mm -hmm. But he goes ahead and he knocks on the door. A light con comes on upstairs. And then the door opens and a farmer says, can I help you? And the guy screams, I don't need your dang Jack anyway, and slams the door back <laughs> on him, okay? He had already predetermined that he was gonna get a negative response. He, he has, and this is the irony of these anxious thoughts that take over is that it, it gives us this false sense of control over the situation. Like if I, if I think of all the worst case scenarios, maybe I can prevent it. Mm -hmm. But in all likelihood, oftentimes what happens is that we end up creating the problem that we're trying to avoid instead. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when we're looking through our thoughts, if you can think about it like a fish tank, right? So we're, we're going around and we're viewing the world through this paradigm, through this perspective, and we think that the thoughts that we're thinking are actually true. That is cognitive fusion, okay? Mm -hmm. So the, developing the skill of cognitive diffusion instead of looking through your thoughts, looking at your thoughts mm -hmm. is what we're talking about today. And it requires that we we take control of our nervous system and actually be able to to come to exercises that create awareness within ourselves so that we can bring ourselves back to peace and presence. I always tell my friends, no negative waves. Mm -hmm. If you hang around people that are always negative, it will bleed into you. It absolutely will. So yes. you got to knock it out real quick. You do. You want to surround yourself by people who have a healthy perspective on life, especially if you struggle with this mightily. And struggling with this might look like, you know, um, Maybe, for example, you're you're go you're you're going to do a dinner. And you have mm -hmm. ten seats maximum, so you find yourself stressing about who you're going to leave out, wondering if they're going to get mad. Um, perhaps, maybe, if you are someone who overthinks, uh, when someone brings you. Um, 
you know, a waiter brings you the wrong food at a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Instead of letting the waiter know that this is not what you ordered, you go ahead and eat it because you're worried about the waiter, uh, you know, being upset or upsetting someone mm -hmm. in the back of the kitchen. What if they spit in my food? I might as well just go ahead and eat it, right? <laughs> so these are <laughs> thoughts that actually will take over. People right. will stay in relationships so they don't have to go through the uncomfortable conversation of breaking up with mm -hmm. someone. Uh, people will, uh, who want like a small wedding will end up throwing a wedding with, with 300 guests because they don't want to upset anyone by not inviting the aunt or the uncle or right. the, the the third cousin, you know, so they end up inviting everyone. So this is a problem that not only creates a lot of stress and anxiety, but it can also over time create depression. And mm -hmm. because it's a really hard way to live, always being in stress and anxiety. Mm -hmm. So we can talk about some some strategies to, um, to bring you back to peace and presence. Yeah. And a lot of times, when you say you can do something and somebody's telling you why they can't do something, mm -hmm. that's a big difference, isn't it? Oh yeah, absolutely. They're so taking it a different path. It is. And so that's a really, that's a really good thing to remember is that for everything that you're afraid of, there is something on the opposite end that you actually want. So you can mm -hmm. actually use the cues of what you're afraid of when you're catastrophizing about something. Well, what do I actually want? And take the mind and actually direct it across to the thing that you, you want. And it frames things up in a completely different way and will actually alter the experience that you have of the situation. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So if you've grown up negative, how do you transform? This is great. So first of all, remembering one, one thing, and you may want to write this down if you struggle with this at home, you don't have to believe everything you think. You don't have to believe everything that you think. And then rule number two is stop following rules that don't exist. So during the break, you and I were talking about mm -hmm. some really good rules that were instilled into you by your dad, which creates a positive mindset that helps mm -hmm. you to win in life. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were programmed either directly or indirectly with, with rules that actually don't serve them. And if you don't bother to actually observe and hold those up to the truth, light of truth, then you will actually think that's the truth of the way things go. So before we were, we were given an example of someone who, um, who wouldn't want to tell the waiter that their food is either not good or that it's the wrong food, right? Or they don't want to break up with someone or they don't want to have a small wedding the way they want because they don't want to upset anyone. They might be operating once they look at it by a rule that they are not allowed to upset anyone. Mm -hmm. I am not allowed to upset anyone. If you're operating by that rule, which is an unreasonable rule mm -hmm. in life, right, then it can cause a lot of stress and anxiety because in every situation, your brain will automatically be evaluating the situation for how is it that I might upset someone here? I'm not mm -hmm. allowed to do that. What okay. if they're breaking up, if they went to the restaurant to break up mm -hmm. and they get the wrong food? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that for someone with a crazy mind, really it's going to be, <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> so here are a few things that you can do though. Okay, so what exercise number one is to observe your thoughts. And again, we're, we're looking for cognitive diffusion, okay? So we're looking to separate ourselves and recognize ourselves as the observer of our thoughts and not the the thoughts themselves, okay? Mm -hmm. So for one minute straight, you set a timer at home, for one minute straight, you write down what your thoughts are. So everything that comes to mind, it may be like, I don't really wanna do this exercise. This is really stupid. I've got a lot of things to do, right? Whatever comes to your mind, you write it down, okay? Then you say, I notice that I think, and then you continue to write, all right? Mm -hmm. And then basically you, you start to look at the fact that I noticed that my thoughts are continue to write. So basically you're starting to create this separation between I think this, this is the way that it is, to I notice that my thoughts are this. And you can actually notice your thoughts through writing, through journaling, but you can also do a meditation process. Meditation is huge for slowing down those RPMs and increasing the gaps between the thoughts so that you're identifying as the observer instead of the thoughts themselves. So in this type of uh, meditation, we've talked about it before, you close your eyes mm -hmm. and you simply have to just watch your thoughts compassionately, right? We don't want right. to judge it. We don't want to make it wrong. We just want to notice the thoughts. So it could be your grocery list for it at first. You might, oh, I got to remember to set the timer for this. Do you, you know? do that right on the spot or is there a certain time during the day that you pick that's best for you of when you do that? Yeah. So the best time of day to do meditation is first thing in the morning. We talked mm -hmm. about when you're in theta state. So you're in theta state two times of the day. Which I love that time. Yes. Right. 
that and that's right when your brain is is the most impressionable right mm -hmm. it's that time of hypnosis so you can self program yourself which is really really powerful right. so it, right after right before you wake right after you wake up and then right before you go to bed both of those times so if you want your day to feel like you're running your day versus your day is running mm -hmm. you then it's good to start even with 5 minutes of meditation where you just notice your thoughts or any other mindfulness practice so if you mm -hmm. you know if you want yoga some people like prayer walking mindfully through nature studies have even shown that washing dishes mindfully is something that can actually well i don't have to worry about that <laughs> <laughs> but if you if you mindfully washing the dishes is very different from just right. washing the dishes, right? Where you're actually smelling the so the smell of the soap and you're feeling into the warm water and you're actually watching washing yourself. So you're basically just bringing yourself into mm -hmm. the present moment. Okay, so mindfulness practice through the day will help you. The other thing is that naming your your thoughts can be a really powerful thing. Mm -hmm. So there's a thought, for example, I'm just a loser. Maybe mm -hmm. that's a thought that comes up whenever you're writing and you notice, hmm, and you ask yourself, does this thought serve me? Is it in line with my values? Does it give me agency and power in life? And if it doesn't, then it's something that you get to release. But so you name that thought? You name like, what do you thought? name it? Like Lucky? Billy Bob, <laughs> the Gremlin, the Bully. The can, Grim Reaper. Right. All right. And you can actually give it in your mind a, an image. It can be a monster. It can be an animal. It can be a child. But what you're basically doing is saying, I am Debbie, mm -hmm. and the thought is Billy Bob. Right? Right. And so you're and creating that separation. And I can slay that thought. You can slay that thought. In fact, Bruce Lee uh, talks about talked about how he would visualize himself writing down a thought, right? And then crumpling up the piece of paper, lighting it on fire, and burning it to a crisp. So it's like you are actually using the thought. You are taking the thought and you're putting it out here. Some people will write the thought on a rock. Mm -hmm. And when they notice themselves thinking, I'm a loser, they'll pick the rock up and walk around with it because that's what's happening right now. I'm holding this thought that's not necessary true and then whenever I'm ready to let it go I actually put the rock down so now it's a physical object that I've named right. that is sitting right there and I can choose to take it or I can mm. put it down and to just tell some of the best dishes I've ever eaten have come to me by accident yeah if you don't send them back and you say well let me try exactly and exactly then you keep ordering them and it's all about the power to evaluate right, right. and that's right. what we're doing here is we're creating that evaluation process we're challenging the thoughts that come through we're recognizing that the thoughts are just thoughts if i ask you uh how is the chair the, the how is the 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 table the the mother to the chair how is the the table the mother to the chair if mm -hmm. i ask you that question Absent any data, your brain is going to create a story about why the table is the mother to the chair without even realizing that the table is not the mother to the chair. So your brain does yeah. that all over the right. place. It's important to evaluate and then ask powerful questions to bring yourself back. That's good stuff. Taming the monkey mind. Taming the monkey mind. All right. Can't wait till next week. We'll see what you got in store. <laughs> all right. There you have it. Debbie Cox, DeNova. We'll see you again next week on Good Vibes.